Should buyers and sellers ever meet? <laughs> well, it depends. I mean, you know, as real estate agents, <clears throat> we're taught no, they shouldn't meet or whatever. And and you know, there's there's a lot of reasons for that. We talk about loose lips, sink ships, or whatever. You think um, something really, really innocuous that the buyer or seller says it can um, it can it can ruin a transaction. Um, it can ruin it for the buyer or it can ruin it for the seller. You know, in the old days, um, we used to have closings and there was a closing ceremony and the, the buyer's agent came in and the seller's agent came in and the attorney was there and the, usually the lender would be there and the buyers would be, you know, husband and wife would be there, the seller's husband and wife would be there. And all of us met at the table and there was, um, uh, that was usually the first time the buyers and sellers had met. And there was a lot of communication and, you know, oh, you need to know this about the refrigerator, you need to know this about the neighbor, da, da, da. And it was, it was a good time. It's very rare for buyers and sellers to meet at a transaction now. The, the, the transactions are so broken up that usually the seller comes in a couple of days early, signs all the deeds, does all the preparation, and then the buyer comes in and signs what they have to do. And, and so I would say the vast majority of the time now buyers and sellers Never, never say a word to each other, which is a lot different than it was 15, 20 years ago. But um, uh, as agents, we're probably a little bit more protective of sellers and we don't want sellers to have to communicate with a buyer. I mean, one of the reasons why they're hiring us and paying us a lot of money is so they don't have to, to deal with the buyer. But um, uh, we're also afraid that uh, a seller might say something that will kill the deal that you know they didn't think was a big deal at all. Um, it doesn't matter what you say you know it can really it could really really hurt a transaction did you have that example of uh somebody asking about um shooting in the property yeah yeah so yeah like one one time uh we had buyers and sellers meet without the uh agent's knowledge and uh uh the buyer just you know said hey uh want to make sure is it is it okay to shoot in this neighborhood and the seller said oh yeah the neighbor shoots all the time. He's got a firing range in his backyard. Da, da, da. And people were worried they had kids. They didn't, you know, that, so that scared them and ended up killing the deal. And, and um, you know, you just have to, you have to be cautious about what you say as a seller. Um, uh, so, you know, it, it can go, it can go either way. Um, but some, sometimes, you know, it can help. I mean, uh, we're in such a competitive market right now where we're um, uh, in some price points, we actually have multiple offers. And um, uh, the, uh, sometimes the buyers will write a letter to the seller and they'll say, you know, this is why we want your home. And um, uh, if there's a bunch of offers in there and someone's taking the time to write the letter, that can, that can affect, that can move the seller and they might be more, more pro, pro uh, that particular buyer. I had a transaction last year on a farm where um, uh, the buyers and sellers met and um, uh, we were in a multiple offer situation and uh, it went for way above asking price and um, uh, we had a buyer that um, didn't uh, meet the highest price but they had met with the sellers and they were just so enchanted by this particular buyer that they said look if you meet the highest bid we'd rather sell to you to than to these other people and so you know it worked out for them but <laughs> most of the time you know and it can work out in some situations whatever but most of the time uh, I think I think it's better like one of the services that a real estate agent provides is that buffer and um, uh, we don't want the buyer to show that they're earnest so you know we have we have af after the deal is under contract we still have to go through all these repairs and there's an another round of negotiations and uh, you know we find out the roof is bad we find out the HV is, HVAC is bad we find out there's a leak under the kitchen sink well these are things that we want the seller to fix for our buyer and if the buyer is like oh I'm so glad I got to meet you I really like your house the negotiations aren't going to go well for the buyer so you know I mean everyone's innocent and everything but you don't want to you don't want to show any cards you don't want to give up leverage um, <laughs> just as a for instance I had a client a few years ago um, that I had their house listed and uh, this this uh, couple made an offer and he looked them up on Facebook and the first thing that came up on Facebook is we just made an offer on a house 
we hope we get it. We'd pay any price for this thing. And so, you know, it was like 185 on 200. And he came back with, okay, it's going to be 200, you know. I mean, so, and, and that was an inadvertent buyer and seller meeting, but it can happen.